In February of 2021, TikTok users' spirits and such consulting's videos began popping up on many users' For You page. For many users, it seemed odd because her videos were very typical for TikTokers at her age. But if you take a closer look, some of her videos are very disturbing. At 1 a.m. on February 21st, a 911 call was placed to Lancaster Police Department. 14-year-old Claire Miller made this phone call after stabbing her 19-year-old sister Helen to death. The 911 call has not been released to the public yet, but reports are saying that the phone call was very disturbing. Claire was screaming into the phone that she stabbed her sister several times and she was extremely hysterical. And at this time, police didn't realize that her parents were sleeping and that her sister was 19 years old and disabled. Police arrived at the Clayton Drive residence in Mannheim Township at 1.50 a.m. When the officers drove up to the home, Claire was standing outside covered in blood. She was trying to wash the blood off her hands in the snow. Police were asking her what happened, and again, it is reported that she was hysterical, saying she stabbed her sister over and over. Imagine that sight driving in the middle of the night through heavy snow to see a 14-year-old girl trying to clean blood off her hands. Claire led police into the home and into Helen's room, where she was on the bed with a pillow covering her face and she had a knife still lodged in her neck. At this time, Claire's parents were still sleeping. Helen Miller was wheelchair bound and had cerebral palsy. She was nonverbal and completely dependent on her family for care. She enjoyed painting and even won an award for a watercolor painting she did. Helen's arms were raised above her body and her hands were close to her face. Investigators believe that Claire placed a pillow over her face so she wouldn't have to look at her sister screaming. This also contributed to Helen's suffocation as well as any screams or any noises she would have been able to make being muffled. Helen fought for her life as hard as she could but unfortunately, because of her disability, she was not able to push Claire off of her. EMTs attempted to revive Helen, but were not able to do so, and she was pronounced dead shortly after. Investigators believe that Claire did not want her parents to hear any noises that Helen may have been able to make. It is very calculated, and it has been brought up in her trial that the murder was premeditated. Claire's parents woke up to find the police in their home, and they found out that while they were sleeping, their younger daughter murdered their older daughter. Claire was then arrested and taken to prison without bail. This 14-year-old girl is accused of stabbing her sister to death in their Lancaster County home. Police say Claire Miller repeatedly told officers, I stabbed my sister. The criminal complaint says Miller called 911 and reported that she stabbed her sister, 19-year-old Helen Miller. Helen was found in bed with a large knife in her neck. The evidence collected was nine kitchen knives, Claire's dry erase board with her chores written on it, and her pajamas she was wearing at the time of the murder, which included a cat t-shirt as well as checkered pajama pants. Claire is currently being charged as an adult due to Pennsylvania law stating if a person commits homicide, they are to be tried as an adult, even minors. She is being held at the Muncie State Correctional Facility it is the only prison in the state with age-appropriate housing for a minor. Because of the pandemic, this case has continually been pushed back and the trials have been rescheduled. Claire at this time has waived her right to a preliminary hearing and she is currently pleading insanity, which doesn't surprise me at all. This is very common in murder cases to plea insanity. There has also been information released to the public stating that the police received a call from an unnamed witness at 1.42 a.m. stating that Claire spoke with them and said that she was having suicidal and homicidal thoughts. At this point, police were already making their way to her home. Figuring out who Claire was and why she murdered her sister is a challenge for investigators because she is so young. We see a glimpse into her personality or at least what she thinks people want to see of her through her TikToks. We also know that Claire was obsessed with the anime Danganronpa. In this show, a character kills his sister in a violent fashion. I feel that that is very challenging for investigators because just because someone enjoys a certain type of content does not mean they're violent. 
I personally really enjoy horror movies, but I don't go out and kill people. So this is very challenging right now for investigators. And I feel like they're also looking into Claire's family life, finding out if maybe her parents were too strict or didn't pay much attention to her or if there was any other type of situation going on within her family. Because as you could see in some of her TikToks, her father was present. You could also see her sister in the background and her family. And it seems to be a nice family dynamic, but things are not always as they seem. And so maybe there was something else going on behind the scenes where Claire was being mistreated or she was, you know, not being taken care of with her mental health. We, you know, I do feel like there is something else going on behind the scenes. I don't feel that it's all 100% Claire just snapped one day. I do feel like there may have been something going on and her family didn't do anything to help her, which is unfortunate because now they lost both of their daughters. We also see this TikTok video Claire posted only a few hours before killing her sister. It is a very odd video, and knowing what she did that same day makes it even harder to watch. Lastly, in Claire's mugshot, you can see she has scratch marks on her neck. I am interested to see about the scratch marks to see if her sister was able to fight back at all, or if they were self-inflicted wounds by Claire. Either way, this is a terribly tragic story. Helen lost her life in a violent fashion. Her parents lost both of their daughters, and Claire decided to throw her entire life away by committing such a heinous act. There has been a tremendous amount of speculation about this crime on TikTok. Even fake videos made, where the user is claiming they were Claire's original videos. Claire's lawyer is asking the judge to reconsider her case as a juvenile case. This would allow Claire rehabilitation and supervision until she is 21 years old. What do you all think about this crime? Do you think somebody who committed such a violent act could be rehabilitated and live on society again? I'm certainly on the fence about that, but I would think that in this case, it's probably not so. She seems very violent and a very angry individual. So having her just let out in about seven years seems very unsafe to the people around her and the people in her community. One aspect of this case I'm particularly interested in is why they took Claire's dry erase board. What purpose would that serve besides, you know, finding out something that maybe was going on within the family? Like I said, maybe her parents were extremely strict and hard on her and she cracked under pressure. Maybe she was forced to do everything at home. There's a lot of situations I could see this going and in cases I've seen before where the person was just pushed so hard. Not that that excuses murder, but I do feel like there is sometimes cases where people cannot handle the pressure they've been given. And so I do feel like that sometimes causes people to crack, especially if there is some sort of mental illness present where they can you know, be violent. But I'm just curious to see as to why they took that dry erase board. And I'm also curious to maybe if there was like some sort of cryptic message on it, something that Claire wrote on it that would show that she was thinking about being violent. Maybe she wrote some sort of a note on it or something like that. So that's very curious to me. And I'm also very curious as to why uh, she had all those scratch marks on her neck. Because like I said, in all of the news reportings and things that I read and saw about this case, they all made it seem as if her sister could barely even move. So I'm really surprised to hear that she has those scratch marks. I'm wondering if maybe they are self-inflicted. Maybe Claire harmed herself. Uh, beforehand or while she was trying to clean herself off maybe it was like an anxiety thing so I'm just curious to hear about that as well I found that very interesting to hear that she had uh, wounds on her as well so I hope you all enjoyed this video please let me know if there are any other cases you would like me to cover and let me know if you enjoyed this video and I will do an update on it when we hear a verdict finally about this case so I hope you all stay safe out there and have a great day bye